The other day I was watching a video and I was reading the comments and I came across a particular comment that prompted the idea for this video. Now that comment said, you know, I want to be a bio major. Now this video, okay, was of a young lady who is a biology major who was sharing her experiences of being a biology major and somebody in the comments said, well, I want to be a biology major, but I'm scared because I always feel like it's only the smart people that actually do that major and because of that I'm intimidated. Now let's talk about the concept of smart people and this is where I open up my notes. Let me let me open it up. And even on this channel I've had people sort of say that to me where it's like oh I want to do this but I'm but I'm scared or they won't even articulate that they're scared but the question that they're asking me communicates that they are scared of taking a specific step. And so maybe this is going to get your PhD, this is going to applying for a PharmD program, applying for an MD program, applying for some kind of doctoral program. I want you to realize that the concept of smartness, okay, while I do believe that there are people that have natural aptitude for studying, let's not lie about that. There are people that are really, really good at that. I also happen to believe that there is a lot to be said for a determined person who is willing to do the work. Now there's a lot of research around this actually and a good book to read on this subject is a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Yes, some people may not be so strong in the sciences. I'm not so good at art. It's a different discipline. I'm not good at it. If you ask me to paint, you know, like paint like somebody, even, even if you give me the picture to paint, I can't paint. That's not my zone of genius, right? But give me a question on biology. Give me maybe a chemistry problem to solve, right? And that that's where my natural abilities lie. So I'm not going to sit here and say that sometimes people are not born with a natural aptitude or ability to excel in a certain field. There are people like that. However, it is possible with determination, consistency, and practice to do well in a chosen profession that you want to be in. So the first thing I want to say is that it's not always the smartest people that get into PhD programs, PharmD programs, MB programs. Yes, a lot of these people are naturally intelligent, but it's not only the A students who get there. I have seen people who are in medical school programs who had Bs. Yes, maybe later on they had to go take a post back program so that they could improve their grades, but eventually they got there. I've known people that didn't get into the top, the top of the toppest tier, whatever the tiers are of medical school, but they went to med school in the Caribbean, came back to the US, and they're doing excellently well, right? And so I want you to disabuse your mind of the fact that it's only the smartest people who do ABC. Yes, natural intelligence and aptitude is a real thing, but don't talk yourself out of doing something that you want to do. The second thing I want to point out in this video is that you know that imposter syndrome that you're feeling? Like, oh, you know, what if I'm not so smart to be in this program? Let me tell you, everybody feels that kind of feeling. I'll tell you this point blank. Everybody feels it. And depending on which demographic you are part of, those feelings can be even more intensified than others. So for instance, right, I I used to be an international student. You, If you've watched this channel long enough, you know that. And for a long time, I used to, you know, have some kind of inferiority complex about the fact that I wasn't a real American, right? Or that I would speak English and people would say, oh, where's that accent from? I had a lot of insecurity around that. And sometimes people even make you feel that because your accent doesn't sound American, that you are less intelligent than, say, an American. So, so, already right before i even go into a phd program before i do anything i'm already feeling this imposter syndrome around who i am as a person an african an immigrant somebody that doesn't speak english like the regular american right there's already all of that 
And yet, I'm here to tell you that I did successfully defend my PhD dissertation. Yes, by the time I was in, I had multiple publications to my name. And so you may be feeling this, but a lot of people are feeling it too. And there's a video I did on dealing with imposter syndrome, but please realize that, that all the people that look super confident, <laughs> they're feeling it too so don't feel like an odd one out don't feel like you're not supposed to be there you deserve to be there just like anybody else number three is that yes grades are important but grades are not everything listen to me when i graduated from my biology degree from undergrad i graduated with a 3.83 i graduated summa cum laude with honors okay i graduated with honors and when i was done because i had only focused on getting all these a's and making my you know my my transcript look so great right i didn't have certain hard skills and even some i would say some soft skills that would allow me to get jobs in places where i wanted to get jobs so grades are good but more than grades i want you to also begin to look at what else can i work on to add value to me what, what can I do to add value to me? Can I learn coding? Can I learn how to do ABC? Can I volunteer for this organization? Can I be a part of this thing? Because again, grades are important and grades may be important for you to get into your PhD, PharmD, MD, whatever D program you're trying to get into. But ultimately, right, you have to remember that there is a workforce waiting for you. And in some, you know, career paths, like if you're a pharmacist or if you're an MD, you know, sometimes when you're done with school, the path is pretty clear as to what you could possibly do. But instead of worrying so much about your grades, yes, I want you to study and I want you to do well <laughs> on, your, on your grades. But more than that, find ways to continuously add value to yourself so that even if you have a break between when you finish your undergrad and when you go into a program, you have these very, very tangible skills that you can use out there in the work world. Now, let me tell you, because I didn't have these skills, I ended up working in retail after my bachelor's degree. Now, nothing is wrong with working in retail, but you know, let's be honest. I went to school and did all of that hard work to work in retail. That was a little harsh, that was a little harsh. I mean, it paid the bills for a while, but I, in hindsight, if I had focused on maybe building up my lab skills, volunteering, interning, finding ways to like just build up those skills, I would have been able to confidently go, confidently go into the job market and say, I have ABC skill, and this is why I'll be an asset to your company. Like I said earlier, you deserve to be in your doctoral program. I know there are some people that look cocky and confident. They look like, you know, they're all that. They won all the prizes. They were valedictorian. They were on the choir. They were on the sports team. You didn't do any of the, those things, but you're still there with them. <laughs> okay. Another thing I wanted to say is continue to stay prepared, right? So a lot of the time, the reason why we're not confident about, you know, trying a certain path or going a certain way is because we haven't done our research or we did a little bit of research and got intimidated or we haven't seen other people like us do it, like various reasons, right? So before you dismiss a particular career path and say, oh, that sounds too hard. That sounds like it's for the smart people. I want you to really do your research, right? Speak to career counselors and speak to, you know, educational advisors at the different universities that you may be applying to. You may reach out, you know, if you're applying to a PhD program, you may try to find if they have open houses. A lot of schools have open houses and, and these things. Go to these open houses, right? Go listen to what they have to say. And then also, as you are there, look around at the people and look around at the brochures and look around at things that they are putting out for their marketing. Now, going to open houses will definitely give you a lot of insights to what the program is like and what the culture is like. But also, there are forums online. Go on there. Go read what you know people are saying about the different programs. There's LinkedIn. Go find somebody that has been to that school, been in that program, and ask them about their experiences, right? Do not 
not do research and then conclude that oh this seems so hard this seems so impossible it's only the smart people do not talk yourself out of doing something because you think it's only smart people that do it